kind of funny. You know, laughing at crackheads. You know, when you could laugh at crackheads. Remember when you could laugh at crackheads? Okay. Let's get into this. <laughs> Sorry. The fuck rate is about to implode. Civilization requires compromise by Bright Eyes on September 4th on Substack. Uh, Bright Eyes Substack. Society as Sex Trade. Our civilization is held together by a pact. Mid-men get pussy, everyone else gets core infrastructure. This pact harnesses the single greatest source of psychic energy known to man, men's desire to secure the partnership, youthful attention, and children of attractive women. It comes at a cost. High-status men have to give up access to pussy they would otherwise have. Mid-women have to settle for mid-men early instead of sharing a high-status men man for a bit and then otherwise remaining single mercenarily marrying at old age, which they would prefer. But the cost is almost certainly worth it for everyone involved. Plumbing is nice. You know? This pack has an intensive margin. The sweeter the deal you make for the mid-men, the more civilization you can squeeze out of them. It's pretty easy to, uh, for example, do 80 hour weeks as a trucker if you have a thin, bubbly, hygienic, erstwhile virgin wife at home who's given you three red haired kids and is anxious about not giving you good enough blowjobs, doing so when she's 30 pounds overweight, angry, a slob, run through, barren, and expects you to center female pleasure during sex is going to be a harder sell. The former paradigm doesn't come for free. In general, you're going to need to build a social apparatus, religion, behavioral mores, unnatural standards to shame women into it, and that shaming will inevitably make real normal women unhappy. But, in exchange, you get more civilization. Hold on a second. There we go. <laughs> Dang. Too good. This bitch is too good. This is my main, uh... And, uh, this is my silent corporation main. That I do most of my mining with, and every once in a while I stay up, like, inordinately late to hitting up my homie and being like, hey, what's up, homie? You know, like, because it's super late, it's bachelor late, you know, he's a, he's a family man, he's all responsible and so smart and shit. <laughs> like, oh, hey, I'll just stay up all night, I don't know. Of course, different people have different tastes. Regarding the amount of female shame to trade for plumbing and technological progress, but recently, for example, in roughly the past century or so, an unhelpful notion has emerged approximately. It's the idea that you can take the trucker, give him the ugly wife, and get him to work as hard as he would if he had the hot wife with shame. Needless to say, this notion is a core load-bearing column for feminism. At the bottom of it, the problem with this idea is that it's not feasible in the long run. The women who cooked it up suffered from the typical mind fallacy, imagining men to be much more vulnerable to social shaming than they truly are. That's generally only one thing that will motivate men to build more civilization, and it's not shaming. It's fucking disgusting. Incel as revolutionary. The long run, inescapable equilibrium is one wherein truckers get, truckers with ugly wives will not work as hard, 
and truckers with no wives may not work at all. Of course, all sociological systems are propped up by a mix of social conditioning and biological impulses, and re equal and re equilibration is never instantaneous. A man raised under the hot wife paradigm might internalize certain principles like a husband should sacrifice for his wife and continue to abide by those principles blindly even when he ends up marrying a sort of ugly woman. The good thing is I'm playing my game and I'm making a video while trash, so I guess it's kind of working out toward my benefit. I'm getting work done. <laughs> In the near term, the feminism egregore is banking on this precarious inertia, carrying civilization forward at least until a more sustainable solution can be discovered. The incel is the single greatest threat to such an outcome and therefore has captured the feminism egregore's attention. Incels as such are not really a direct threat to anything. Oop, looks like the load is full. Pardon me for one moment. Not a direct threat to anything by construction. There are too few and uncharismatic to do much of anything beyond random acts of small-scale violence. When they have managed to do However, is speed run the conjuring of a new egregore? Who knew that tight knit groups of highly intelli intelligent autistic men, monomaniacally focused on a single problem, could generate powerful ideas? <laughs> I love that. God, that's so brilliant. <laughs> oh. Okay, hold on, I gotta make a bookmark here in space. Oh boy, oh boy. Done smashed. Oh boy. Let's turn off that mining laser. All drones are in. Excellent. Drones in, drones in, drones in. Align, align, align. And accept this. And. Surely, the original incel memeplex had a few delusional duds. What a, what is a wrist cell really? But it also inevitably had some biting hits: cock, carousel, wall, beta bugs, hypergamy, and crucially, social dynamics weaned out the former over time as the modal member moved away from. Saint Black Ops 2 Cell and towards Andrew Tate, only the ideas that reliably square for the average mid guy made the cut. We've gotten to the point where the most prominent voices in the Cell Egregore part. Well educated, 8 out of 10 men provocative. Uh, advocating partly on behalf of their social inferiors and partly out of an aristocrat's taste for social arson. Forgot that line. We've gotten to the point where the most prominent voices in the incel egregore are well-educated eight of ten men advocating partly on behalf of their social inferiors and partly out of an aristocrat's taste for social arts. The ideas it espouses are facially correct for the average Joe, and it's sanded off enough rush edges to begin to jump from 4chan to normistries like TikTok. The incel revolution is now in the streets. Re-equilibration will proceed apace, and midmen will progressively back out of their end of the deal. This poses a civilizational, and there's no word after that, 
It just says this poses a civilizational, but a, that's it. <laughs> a new cope. Feminism, a political program which seeks to liberate men women from their end of the bargain will not go down without a fight as the incel egregore gains converts and midmen start defecting it will generate a number of copes for its supporters AI robotics immigrants that will replace midmen or right around the corner and then we'll have plumbing again right now there's just a crisis of masculinity. If you help us shame midmen just a bit more, they'll go back to being responsible pay pigs. Men are being psyoped by baseless radical ideology. If we tweak the algorithm, they'll go back to what your dad was like. We needing hot wives is only true when they're socially conditioned to be pigs. We can convince them to work hard for ugly wives. They just need a bit of an education. These copes won't do much of anything. The cat's out of the bag, but they will generate a lot of heat. Much social commentary in the coming decades will be exercises in such feminist cope as the promise of cost-free female defection from the civilizational bargain slowly dies and the proverbial bill comes due for defectors. This process will be psychologically painful for many. The music will stop and tens of millions of midwomen will realize that they're priced out of the eligible husband market altogether. Female social circles will be rent into social haves and... Oh, I'm sorry. Female social circles will be rent into sexual haves and sexual have-nots. Pardon me, I've been drinking a bit too much probably. Give me a moment to pause and drop off all my loot before I get ganked. Because it's even online. And if you wait too long doing anything, somebody will fucking gank you. <laughs> I love this game so much. I swear, all the time, I sit here going, I love this game, and then I'm like, I hate you. I hate you, you online. Why would you respond? Why would this fucking thing respond? I hate you. And then I'm like, oh, I really love this game. <laughs> At some point, I should email a couple characters that have killed me. Just to be like, okay, you, you do you have a YouTube channel where you, like, tell people how you like I mean you were on me like stink on shit how did you do that there's I recently found some shit out in that regard but anyway <laughs> ganking people in EVE Online is really it's like one of the height of the science of video games is, is when because I, I recently found out like somebody dropped in the comments how many seconds it takes them after they do a certain thing. And I'm just like, holy shit. Holy shit. It doesn't matter if you could be, you could be in a, you, like, you have to really, one, you have to really be slipping, but two, I was like, that's pretty impressive, actually. So, anyway. Just had to put that out there. Uh, just, yeah, so watch out for gankers when you're playing EVE Online, because you never know who the gankers are. So, a little bit of trouble there. There we go. Now, oh, oh, article, don't go away. No, no, no. The havoc these women will wreak won't be insubstantial. The terminal feminist cope that men changed the game on them halfway through will be absolutely true. Their prospect of having it all 
a defect cooperate outcome. Or possibly that's okay, their prospect of having it all, a defect cooperate outcome, will evaporate in a few years at a time. The fuck rate will plummet and there will be hell to pay. Imagine Katie, a fifty five year old mid woman perpetually on a double dose of Lexapro and Ativan, leaving her low-wage mid-management desk job a few hours early in order to make a birthday party held for her friend's mini poodle. Now, multiply this by 30 million... <laughs> Each one spewing misery and social havoc into the world for decades on end. I was not supposed to laugh. I was not supposed to do any of that right there. I'm supposed to feel great feelings for these women. <laughs> no one should be alone. No one should feel loneliness. stage of incel ideological saturation, we should get our first cohort of Katie's in five years or so. Dialogue. Put simply, we have a major civilizational unraveling on our hands. Much of the things we assumed were conjured up by the magic of modernity, reliable core infrastructure, cheap food, energy shipping, functional business apparatus, were in fact gifts bestowed upon us by a hungry god. We stopped sacrificing delicate virgins to him and tried to offer angry, fat hags in their stead. He's wise to the ruse. OMG, my friend, 33-year-old Meredith with an MPH from two, Tier 2 school, working 70k a year email job, is not an angry fat hag. She's a total catch, and you're sexist. Listen, I have nothing against Meredith. I'm sure she's nice, but the hungry god doesn't care if she's nice. The hungry god cares if she's thin, young, submissive, virgin. The young, the hungry god is sexist because 5,000 years ago only one out of 17 men passed on their genes and viewing women as pieces of meat helped many of them thread that needle. He evaluates Meredith as a piece of meat and always will, no matter what I think of her. On his altar, Meredith will always be an ugly, fat hag. You can stop sacrificing to him, sure, but don't be surprised when his gifts stop coming. He won't always be sexist. Men only objectify women because of social conditioning, which we can undo as a civilization. I sort of agree, actually. You can brainwash most people into aping whatever behavior you like. 
But while you can manipulate their minds, you cannot dupe their spirits and flesh. Men tip fertile strippers double what they tip infertile strippers. Do you think they'll behave any differently when you ask them to pay for pussy with their sweat? The male body intuitively knows which prizes are worth fighting for and which ones warrant only holding pattern at best. No shaming will change this ever. You may nominally hold on to full male, mid-male employment, but the output will be greatly reduced. This is the absolute best case scenario here. The anything more promising is delusional Cope. Girl bosses will compensate for reduced mid male productivity. There are women willing to clean sewers, drive trucks, and run unfashionable businesses, but they're outliers. Could this change? I guess. But we've had feminism for 60 years, and most women still choose lower paying alternatives. a sudden transition of mid-women out of small labor markets and into the core infra-labor market any day of the week. And deep down you would too. This is a revenge fantasy. You're an incel. I don't really have a dog in this fight, as rich girls never really stop being thin, cute, virgin, and nice. And if I really needed to pair up with a mid-girl, I'd use my SMB to find one of the good ones. The Katie's of the world won't be girls who spurned me, my friends, and got their good comeuppance. They'll be 110 IQ stage 2 P zombies who got screwed over by seductive egregore. Girls in a position to spurn me generally are greater than 130 IQ, Keegan stage 4 plus, and highly agentic. They'll be fine basically no matter what, which is part of why I'm attracted in the first place. If you're a woman and reading this, there's a good chance you fall into group B and not group A. So this is your chance to feel good about yourself. If this is a fantasy, it's contemptuous and sadistic, not resentful and vengeful. Prognosis. The outlook here is simple. This is, this will not be an extinction event, but it will put serious pressure on civilizational infrastructure and produce a metric fuckton of female suffering. Hedge against the former by going long consumer goods, short industrials, befriending a few handy min men with pathologically high morale. Hedge against the latter by limiting social exposure to the kill zone, that is, concentrators of middle-aged, of mid-middle-aged women, like academia, media, normie social media, politics, and corporate bureaucracy. Sooner than later, it's going to be a bloodbath out there. And if you're cool with casual sex, unlike me, and feel feeling particularly charitable, consider lending a Katie your companionship. Any little bit to prop up the fuck rate will go a long way. That was by Bright Eyes on Substack. I would suggest subscribing to Bright Eyes. Uh, I don't know much about the Substack thing, but I just keep loving it. More and more. All the time.